nature's best bobtail. Welcome back to Expresso here on this casual Friday. And the theme for this casual Friday is, of course, how to get your sea legs. Hence, we are dressed in all kinds of pirate attire. So get yours. Send us still your pictures. We're waiting for them on our Facebook wall. Now, the Paralympics, of course, is underway. And it's just incredible to see how these athletes perform despite their disabilities. Now, this morning, our Expresso vet, Dr. Roy Aronson, joins us to talk about guide dogs and the need for guide dogs, not only at the Paralympics, but also for those people living with the condition of blindness on a day-to-day -day basis. They are absolutely incredible animals and they mean so much to their owners. Dr. Roy, very nice to have you and also see you embracing Casual Day. Arr, Arr. the pirate <laughs> stuff, you know. <laughs> Love it. So, very nice topic this morning, guide dogs. I mean, special, yeah. special animals. And, and as I've said, it's nice to see that these, you know, Olympic athletes perform despite their disabilities, especially the blind athletes yes. as well. Taking a look at our, at our swimmer, Mr. Herbs himself, you know, that took a bronze medal in the 100 meter freestyle in the S11 swimming event. It's just incredible what these guys do. Well, you know, blind dogs have become such an integral part of a blind person's life. And there are so many dimensions to, these, to, to the yeah. whole uh, issue. Um, the, the puppies are born and at seven weeks of age, they are given to a, a, a home called a puppy raiser. Yeah. And these dogs stay with these people till the age of about 12 to 14 months. They are fostered, they are loved and cared for. And then these people have to hand over this dog that they've loved for this time to the Guide Dog Association. Wow. The training takes a six month, it's a six month training period for the dog. And then there's the bonding, the blind person or the visually impaired person is paired with their dog and undergoes a training period with the dog. So by mm. the time the dog is 18 or 19 months, there's been a massive mm. financial investment. That's incredible. You know, up to 10, 12,000 rands per yeah. dog to get them to the point where they are yeah. of use. So obviously because the owner and the dog, you know, they need to understand each other because they rely on each yeah. other so much. Now, the veterinary role when it comes to, to guide dogs, what exactly would that be? Well, you know, because there's this amazingly intensive training period and it's expensive, you want to really maximize the dog's use for life. And it would be a complete disaster if after five or six years these dogs started showing signs of clinical illness. Elbow dysplasia and hip dysplasia are the two things. They are mainly Labradors mm. and Labrador Retrievers. And uh, if these dogs were to go lame, uh, first of all, the, 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 the owner, the blind person, would have to give up the animal because it couldn't work anymore. And the investment has been huge. So the vet, from the veterinary side, we want to try and ensure that these heritable diseases are minimized. And that yeah. means that the parents of the guide dog, mm. the guide dog the sire and dam, need to be certified hip dysplasia free and elbow dysplasia free. And, yeah. and whilst there are people who donate puppies to the guide dog association, suitable puppies, I'm told, I, I actually phoned my good friend Steve Kitley, who's a vet yeah. in Cape Town, and he's the guy that does most of the guide dog work. And he told me that, that these dogs are specially bred from known sires and dams who were guide dogs yeah. themselves. So it's almost keep the genes yeah. going, you know. They're really suitable a lot of, lot, Definitely a lot of work goes into there. Now, I think it's something a lot of people don't even think about <laughs> is the fact that, you know, the, people living with a blind condition, where they're normal people, they get old, um, yes. but the dogs don't get as old. So there's a change that needs to happen at some point. And this is a, a very sad thing. We don't think about this, but we live to, please God, 75, 80 years yeah. of age. A dog's use for life is 12, maybe 13, 14 years of age, if they're lucky. So this blind or visually impaired person mm. will have to change dogs four or five times in their lifetime. Yeah. And, and I was told by Steve that there is a tremendous bond. You know, it's a 24-7, 365 relationship. And it's a, a, a human-animal bond at its absolute best. The owners love their dogs and the dogs mm. love their owners. And when an old dog has to be pensioned off, it's very, very traumatic, I'm told, for the, new, for the owner to accept the new dog, which is something that I haven't even thought about. Yeah. And there's huge resistance on the part of the visually impaired person to accept a new dog because he's mm. used to his old one and he loves his old one and it's been his absolute 
yeah. full-on companion. Because you grow so attached to that yeah, dog. And it's amazing how these dogs really help these people, you know, with simple things like, uh, for instance, you know, an English uh, soccer player at the Olympics, you know, he was training, the dog helps him get on the bus yeah. and gets off. And it's incredible what these guys do. Mr. Roy, thank you so much, man. You very, are... very nice to have you on thank Espresso. You. And, you know, you keep rocking that. Uh... And I wanted to always toss my hair out of my eyes. <laughs> this is my chance. There's your chance. <laughs> awesome stuff. Dr. Roy Aronson. Of course, you can find him on Facebook. Roy Aronson, also on Twitter at the African Vet. Ask him any pet questions that you would like to. Right now is that time of the morning. It's going at 8 o'clock. The Express coming up next.